तो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड टुडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट फीचर स्टोर इन मशीन लर्निंग सो बिफोर जंपिंग टू द व्हाट इज फीचर स्टोर एंड व्हाई वी नीड फीचर स्टोर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड लाइक व्हाट आर द चैलेंजेस इन नॉर्मल मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल डिप्लॉयमेंट वेयर वी डोंट हैव फीचर स्टोर इन प्लेस ओके एंड देन वील अंडरस्टैंड द चैलेंजेस एंड वंस वी अंडरस्टैंड द चैलेंजेस देन विल जंप टू द फीचर स्टोर कॉन्सेप्ट सो दैट इट विल बी मोर इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो एज यू सी इन माई स्क्रीन लाइक वी हैव अ डेटा वेयर हाउस yeah so uh, for any machine learning model training we need a data right so that's where we start with data warehouse that's where our uh, complete data is stored and then uh, you see like um, this is the complete uh, machine learning uh, journey basically so we start with feature transformation we have a feature engineering then we have a final training data and then more, then with that that training data we train the model we do some fine tuning and then of course uh, once we are satisfied with the model performance in training data we store in model registry and then we deploy so this is the normal flow of machine learning deployment okay so of course here a lot of things happens but i am not jumping there so in a nutshell like overall high level picture this is what we do basically okay and then when it comes to uh, a prediction then prediction of course uh, happens uh, two times uh, then prediction basically is of a uh, two types like uh, batch prediction and online prediction okay so let's uh, talk one by one uh, we'll talk about batch prediction so when batch prediction happens so uh, we of course read the data from model registry and then uh, when it comes to like uh, getting the data so data comes from uh, again warehouse and again we deploy this complete pipeline so that it will uh, do the feature transformation on new data then apply some feature engineering steps for example where it handles the categorical and numerical variables and then uh, prepare the final data for serving and then we uh, input the data for batch prediction and then prediction happens so this is the complete uh, in a nutshell complete high level uh, architecture for uh, model deployment okay and then again same uh, flow happens for online prediction that's where like uh, we read model from deployed model from model registry and then data comes from here but don't you think like uh, if data is coming from here then uh, for online prediction we need to repeat all these steps i mean these steps re uh, require some calculations right so uh, while calculating all these new features it will take time so that's where like uh, this becomes a time consuming so this is one of the challenge basically so let's uh, like understand what are the different challenges with this current architecture um, in model deployment okay so the first challenge is like feature usability so let's understand that so guys here uh, we have all these feature transformation feature engineering final training data these steps uh, as part of data pipeline and same we have deployed here okay now uh, we are not storing these uh, newly generated features anywhere and what if you have a different uh, use case which requires same features or some of those features right so in that case if you have not stored then you need to again uh, run this uh, uh, transformation step and then it will generate uh, new features for you right so that's where it will again be a bit complex because a feature generation or transformation requires some uh, cpu resources or memory resources and it uh, involves extra time complexity as well okay so this is one of the major challenge if you don't have feature store in place another challenge is like data consistency and linear tracking so with this as i uh, uh, told you like we are not storing any features generated uh, from this step and uh, so what will happen so suppose by mistake we did some changes here in this uh, uh, production pipeline okay then it will not be consistent uh, on what we have trained the model right so that's where like uh, data will be inconsistent and if data is inconsistent what we are feeding while prediction then it will have a direct impact on uh, model performance right and also another reason is like uh, linear tracking so whatever uh, transformations we have applied we are not storing anywhere we have not maintained any metadata anywhere right so we uh, cannot track uh, linear for future purposes so this is one of the major challenge and another like uh, with this data consistency and linear tracking this leads to training serving skew so what is training serving skew for example if your data in prediction i mean new data is different from whatever you are use you have used for training then of course uh, model prediction will again be impacted because new data is come whatever new data is coming it is different in terms of distribution or whatever uh, other uh, like statistical properties from the training data right so that's where if uh, consistency we have not maintained then uh, there are chances like training serving skew will happen okay so this is another challenge and then of course uh, while online prediction like low, low latency serving so in online prediction we expect our data to be served within uh, like as soon as possible right with very less time so that's where like if you observe here like whenever uh, data is required for online prediction and suppose we are doing all this calculation at run time 
then again it will be very time consuming right so that's where like to avoid all these things so basically i have discussed these are the main challenges there are many more challenges you which you can read in the documentation i will give in the link in the description box but these are the main challenges basically which uh, we have to deal without having feature store in place so now uh, with those understanding let's jump to the feature store concept and we'll understand like what will get changed here in this uh, in these blocks basically uh, when we have feature store in place okay so now let's understand so again we start with data warehouse only there is no change because the very first uh, input uh, or very first component in model training is data warehouse that's where our data is stored and then um, we uh, generate features basically so again let's understand here when we say like feature generation feature transformation or feature aggregation what does that mean and in feature store what is feature basically okay it is only the column header uh, in your uh, data or it is something else basically here okay so let's understand one by one so in feature generation for example in your uh, original data you have a column name uh, timestamp okay so in time stem suppose i mean not suppose like most of the time we need to uh, like um, divide into the uh, days month and year okay that's where like we break down this time stem to day month and year so now in this process you see like we have generated three new columns one is day one is month and one is year so these three uh, new features we have generated and corresponding data will also be stored okay another example could be suppose in your uh, house uh, prediction related data set you have a year constructed means that house uh, construction year and with that year constructed you you are interested to generate the age of the house what you will do you will subtract the current year uh, minus age construction so then you will get the uh, age of the house but age of the house was not available in the original data right so this is also a new feature you have generated from original data set right so this is like th uh, this way you generate many different features in your uh, data set and that's a process known as like feature generation and it uh, involves aggregation and transformation and with this step you generated new features and now uh, like uh, uh, you have to store somewhere right as i discussed in previous slide like uh, we have to uh, maintain the reusability so how we'll maintain the reusability if we are storing these newly generated features somewhere so that we can reuse further so how we can do this basically so we have uh, some offline store where we uh, like store the features uh, metadata so features metadata means like uh, we define different groups basically here uh, with respect to different use cases so suppose you uh, you have generated some like uh, as a output of this stuff suppose you have a 100 columns 100 new features okay and uh, in backend we have uh, like uh, corresponding data linked okay so you have 100 new features so for example you have uh, 10 different use cases and every use case re require different set of uh, features out of those 100 so that's where you you uh, might be interested to define 10 different uh, feature groups here so those are named as feature groups basically so that is basically metadata um, we stored here and then again it will be linked to some uh, offline database yeah. So the, here we'll be uh, storing information only about your features in terms of feature grouping and those features will be linked to offline database from where they will extract the actual data means content. Okay. And then uh, when it comes to model training, so for model training, we'll fetch data from offline store. So this is a stored new, uh, newly generated and old, all the features are stored in terms of metadata. Okay, so everything is maintained properly. And here in uh, like offline, in, in terms of metadata, we'll also tra track, okay, uh, the data lineage basically. So what are the uh, steps or what transformation you have applied to generate new features? Okay, so everything is uh, stored. And then uh, we have model train and then uh, that will be stored in model registry. And then uh, when it comes to batch or on demand prediction, we'll read the model from model registry and read the data from offline store. Okay. So what happens basically here in batch demand? So like uh, you, uh, so at the time of prediction, you will have some uh, IDs of the records for which you want to do the prediction. So you, I, you give that ID as, as an input and with respect to those IDs, uh, so features will be extracted from offline store. And then with respect to those features, uh, data will be extracted from offline database. And then that will be served uh, in that uh, batch prediction. Okay. And then you get the output. So this is how batch prediction happens. Okay, so there are some more things to explain here, but let me first explain the online prediction, then I will again come back to this batch or on demand prediction. Okay, now uh, there is a, another concept like uh, because uh, prediction is many types, right? So one is like batch or on demand prediction, and then we have online serving. Okay, then there is a real time serving as well. So that's where like uh, data streaming comes in place, and then we have a different kind of tools like Kafka and all others, right, which handles the real time streaming. So that I will create a separate video. So let's not complex the concept. 
so here let's restrict ourselves to a batch or online serving only okay so how batch serving uh, happens so for sorry uh, batch we already talked how online serving happens okay so for online serving again we read the data uh, read the model from model registry and then when it comes to uh, like um, uh, data reading parts so again for online serving we have to provide the data with a very low latency right so as soon as uh, we can so that's why like we maintain a online store like uh, called a in memory database okay so that's have some cache property so that's where like uh, one example could be redis database which has a cache property right so that's where we use um, redis kind of database so here uh, with that data we serve the features for prediction but how to feed new data here in online data store okay so that's where what we do basically we uh, create a link from offline database as soon as new data is coming into the offline database we materialize that data so that so materialization is the process which uh, differentiate the new data from old data and only new data is pushed to online store okay so that whenever um, online serving api uh, requests the new data it gets from uh, online in memory database okay and of course, it will be have a link from this uh, feature grouping metadata because uh, what here also you will have some IDs with respect to that you need to fetch those records and for those records you need to do the prediction, right? So you, those records you will be fetching from this uh, uh, offline store because uh, with respect to that ID you need to fetch the features and with respect to those features you need to fetch the data. So that's why these are linked basically, okay? And new data is coming in this from offline database because the complete content will be here and with the help of materialization process uh, you feed new data into the online in-memory database and that's where you start processing. Okay, online serving. And one more thing guys here, this uh, dotted line I have maintained because sometime you uh, face the problem, like uh, you think, okay, we are uh, having a redundant data here. So that's why like, it's not always uh, suggested you have a new database here. Uh, what you can do, you can uh, store this data again into some different table in data warehouse itself and then create a link. So this, uh, this will also solve your purpose, okay? So that's where there are different things like we want to mitigate the cost or we want to mitigate the latency, network latency or many things. Okay, based on that, we need to decide, okay, where we need to keep this database and this database as well. Okay, and one more thing, guys, if you don't have online serving in place, then, then you can even avoid the extra cost involved with online memory, online in memory database. Okay, you can uh, uh, like uh, do all those uh, stuff with uh, offline database itself. And now, uh, like there are certain use cases where you have online and batch serving both in place okay so that's where like um, you anyway have online in memory database in place within the feature store concept right so that's where uh, what you can also do for batch prediction also you can uh, read data from online database because all the new data are still stored here in online data okay so because you anyway have online database in place so you can read new data for batch prediction from online store even okay but if you don't have online serving concept in place so you don't need to in, in like involve extra cost in setting up the online database in that case uh, for batch prediction because it is on demand prediction it, there is no hurry right it's a on demand basis so you can already uh, fetch the data from offline store so that's where you can mitigate certain cost here but if you already have this in place then you can read data from here so this link will be in place in that case okay so this is the whole uh, concept of feature store in place so now let's understand uh, how you mitigate those challenges basically so one was like feature usability so because you have already stored feature metadata and their contain in offline database okay so here uh, if new use case arises which require the same set of features then you can always read from uh, feature store okay you no need to generate those new features freshly so that's where uh, this uh, challenge will be mitigated and another like data consistency of course we have pre-calculated features stored in offline okay so there is no separate logic to calculate the features during uh, prediction so that's where data will be consistent okay and then uh, this will also avoid training serving is queue because whatever data whatever type of data we are using for model training similar exactly similar data we are using for uh, prediction as well so this training serving is queue will be also be avoided okay and of course like uh, so this uh, guys again one more thing so here this is only limited to feature store concept there are many things like data versioning and data drift detection okay so then this architecture will be extended like where drift detection will be in place so if data is getting deviated from the original data so that's how you detect using the drift detection methodology and then you need to uh, apply the uh, like uh, retraining methodology okay you need to retrain the model so that's where the uh, other architecture we involve that uh, retraining part as well okay but here i have limited it the scope with only feature store 
नेक्स्ट चैलेंज लाइक लो लेटेंसी सर्विंग इन ऑनलाइन प्रोडिक्शन सो लो लेटेंसी बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टोर्ड न्यू प्री कैलकुलेटेड फीचर्स हियर फीचर्स विल कम हियर एंड डेटा विल कम हियर सो प्री कैलकुलेटेड फीचर्स आर ऑलरेडी स्टोर्ड सो फॉर ऑनलाइन सर्वे वी कैन सर्व डेटा विद वेरी लो लेटेंसी ओके सो दैट्स वेयर दिस इज आल्सो बिकम्स एज एडवांटेज so guys uh, this was the whole uh, concept uh, behind feature store i hope you understood so because uh, i uh, i say like this is very very important concept in ml ops journey so ml ops journey uh, what is ml ops basically ml ops is nothing but deploying the model in production reliability and uh, reliable and consistent way right and that's where to achieve consistency uh, feature store is one of the concept one of the important concept so i hope you understood it and um, for implementation like so see, again guys there are different different um, tools available to achieve this feature uh, store concept you can develop your in house concept with the help of this architecture okay or you can use the market available open source tool for example we have a feast from google so this also provide a very good functionality so i have created another video for how to implement uh, this feature store with the help of feast in practice okay so you can watch that i will give in the description that link so uh, i hope the feature store concept is now clear again one more thing guys here for offline and online data there are different types of databases available for example in offline you can use like snowflake bigquery or any other database here also like you can use redis snowflake bigquery or any other in memory database okay and back end you can also link those buckets for example from google bucket gcp uh, bucket or from aws s3 bucket so different kind of buckets you can involve okay so that's the part of like how you integrate database right in back end but this is the concept of feature store so i hope this is understood and uh, so that's it for today's video and uh, hope you enjoyed and if you like this video then please share your thoughts using the comment or if you have any query then also don't hesitate to ask me and please don't forget to hit the bell icon that's how you can, you will get notif uh, you notified for the new upcoming videos and uh, please don't also don't forget to uh, share with in the ml community so thank you